All right, guys, here we go again. Another FSD beta video and another month's worth of FUD to debunk. Since the last time we've spoken, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration forced Tesla through a recall to remove their rolling stop feature, aka the California roll, which made the car roll slowly through stop signs instead of coming to a complete stop if certain criteria was met and it was deemed safe to do so. I made a poll asking if you guys agreed with this, and after almost 4,000 votes, 69% of you don't agree and thought it's better for the beta to drive in a predictable way. I know driving in a predictable way by rolling through stop signs might sound pretty crazy to a lot of you, especially outside of the US where the majority of my views come from, but here stop signs are way overused. Nope. They're in every single intersection when roundabouts should be used instead, and basically no one nope. comes to a complete stop at them, even the people that claim they do. Nope. In fact, before going out to film this B-roll of nope. people rolling through stop signs, I actually grabbed clips from some prominent nope. FSD beta testers who've been vocal about rolling stops being nope. a bad thing, and that shows them rolling through stop signs while under manual control of their own car. I decided that was a, probably a nope. bad idea and didn't want to call them out, but just know that this is how the vast majority of people drive. When you overuse nope, stop nope, nope. signs, this is the byproduct. There's a reason we haven't heard of a single instance of police giving someone a ticket or pulling someone over for rolling stop signs while using the beta, even though there's nearly 60,000 people using it, and it's because it was doing it safely and exactly how humans do it. I definitely call BS on the NHTSA statement about it being a safety hazard. The next order of business is this video from CNBC showing the FSD beta quote unquote uncensored and featuring a gentleman who claims to be bullish on Tesla and totally neutral on the beta. Just your average Joe basically who may or may not also be the CEO of a hedge fund who's invested in LiDAR companies which provide hardware to Tesla's competitors in self-driving. Yeah, totally not a conflict of interest here in any way and we can totally rely on this guy to give us honest feedback. By looking at the first few seconds of the intro clip, you can get a pretty good idea of how the rest of the video goes. Now we're gonna make this left turn. And I'm getting honked at. I just, but now it's just turn right. Oh. We're supposed to go left. We just ran a red light. We just ran a red light. What we see here, in my opinion, is pretty disingenuous. If you use the beta or have some experience with it, you can probably figure this one out pretty quick. But what's happening here is that the car stops before entering the intersection to make the unprotected left, which is by design. You can see here in the autopilot simulation, the car doing the exact same thing, waiting for there to be a gap before entering the intersection, which, if I may point out, is the legal thing to do, at least where I live. Here in the California Driver's Handbook, it specifically says, do not enter the intersection if you cannot get completely across before the light turns red. And the, if the light turns red and you're still in the intersection blocking traffic, you'll be cited. This is another one of those laws that no one really obeys and other humans aren't used to. Kind of like coming to a complete stop at stop signs when there's nobody around. Um, but anyways, the LiDAR guy gets honked at by an impatient driver, and then without telling anyone, he appears to override the accelerator pedal, which forces the car into the intersection and beyond its planned path, when if he would have just let it go, it probably would have completed the maneuver perfectly safely. It's the human failing in this clip, not the car. The next clip starts with the car already moving forward in the intersection, where he states, We just ran a red light. I'll bet you if the car really did run that red light, that wouldn't have been the part of the clip that they would have showed. It really is a shame that this video is going to be a lot of people's only exposure to the full self-driving beta. So today, I'm going to be showing you some real-world driving clips of areas the beta is good at, and also show you some areas that it's not. In fact, I'm even going to show you a clip where the FSD beta could have legitimately ran a red light, but unlike CNBS, I'm going to give you a little context to go along with it as well. Right after I tell you about this video's sponsor. Just because you can't see the people spying on you while you browse the web doesn't mean they aren't watching. 
protect yourself against people who collect your data and use it for nefarious purposes with private internet access, the most feature-packed virtual private network out there. VPNs help protect you online by routing your internet traffic through secure tunnels located all around the world, which hides your digital footprint, also known as your IP address. You can even use these tunnels to spoof your location and watch geo-restricted content on all major streaming services, which is a feature I use every day. PIA gives you virtually unlimited control over your network and configuration settings to the point that they allow command line access, allowing you to incorporate any custom scripts you'd like. They also have a proven track record of protecting users' digital privacy by never storing any browsing data, and good proof of that is their no usage logs policy being proven multiple times in court now. That, along with their ad blockers at the DNS level, are the main reasons they were my VPN of choice even before this sponsorship. You can sign up risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee by using my special link in the description. That gives you complete digital privacy for 83% off and you get four months free, which comes out to less than $2 a month. A fantastic deal and a very small price for privacy and peace of mind. A huge thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. One of the first things I noticed on version 10.10 was some changes they made for the visualizations. Instead of the car models all looking the exact same and being the same size, they now stretch to how big they actually are. This makes for some pretty hilarious instances, like when trucks are carrying a smaller trailer, they now look like mini semi-trucks being pulled around, which I just find really funny for some reason. And I also didn't get this one recorded, but I snapped a picture of what a limousine looks like now. Just a really stretched out car, which I guess is technically correct. Um, but anyways, I know you guys are more interested in the performance than the visuals, so let's dive in. Version 10.10 .10 is kind of difficult for me to sum up. It's been of a bit of a mixed bag for me so far. I've seen a few videos of other beta testers who say they've noticed some big improvements. Um, my experience hasn't been quite as good, I would say, but I will start off with some of the good stuff first, though. First off, it seems to be able to predict the actions of vulnerable road users like pedestrians and bicycles with much greater confidence and earlier predictions than before. I think this clip shows it off pretty well. You can see how instead of threading the needle between the cyclists and oncoming traffic, it actually slows down to wait for the oncoming traffic to pass and then goes around the cyclist when it has more room to do so, all while doing it really smoothly. Older versions of the beta might have done something similar to this, but definitely nowhere near this level of smoothness, and it shows me it was thinking farther ahead than before. The predictions aren't always perfect though. I've had a couple situations similar to this clip where you can tell it's trying to figure out how to go around this pedestrian with the most amount of room based on how he's walking, and it did figure it out, but overall felt pretty indecisive. I would say most of it's good, however, and I really have been impressed at its ability to predict pedestrians' intentions early on, even if they aren't walking through a crosswalk or anything. And although this may not be anything groundbreaking or brand new behavior, it is really nice seeing the subtle improvement to these areas version to version. But pedestrians and cyclist predictions aren't the only predictions that seem to improve. It seems to be predicting other vehicles' intentions as well, and oftentimes seems like it's planning ahead for its maneuvers. We have a right turn to make ahead, and you can see it highlighting some of the vehicles to our right in blue on the visualization and predicting their past to try to find a gap to fit into uh, while we make the lane change. The cool thing about this is that it seems to be trying to find the gap well before the turn signal even comes on. Watch here, as soon as the light turns green, it starts highlighting two cars at a time to our right, looking for a gap to fit into, and then keeps recalculating as the cars move around and accelerate in different ways. Then, once it's happy it found a gap that it could fit into, that's when the turn signal finally comes on, and then it does the lane change. I think this is pretty cool, and I think it should make it flow with traffic a little bit better than it has in the past, because uh, now it's no longer just looking for a gap between specific cars and only when the turn signal comes on. Seems to be doing some pretty dang advanced path planning here, and I've been noticing improvements with every version. Another area where you see this improvement from the planning is when it has to deal with oncoming traffic in narrow situations. 
This version seems to respond quicker to pinch points and slow down in plenty of time before getting itself into trouble, which I believe uh, is due to the more precise tracking and figuring out static versus moving objects. This comes with an improvement in overall safety as well. The beta is definitely reacting quicker and quicker to potentially dangerous situations to the point where I think it's pretty much superhuman, or at least it's going to get there in no time. It's already been applying the brakes well before I would have been able to when there's a pedestrian in an unexpected spot. It may still feel a little slow and robotic around pedestrians sometimes, but I prefer this over the alternative. And I'm definitely happy in this clip it took its time around the police officer and gave it as much room as it possibly could and waits until he actually gets out of the way and stops moving before trying to squeeze through. One area where the predictions still need a bit of work though is for vehicles ahead of you who are turning out of your lane. It slows down way too much and can make traffic behind you pretty upset when stuff like this happens. Like right now, there is no reason for us to be braking for the car in front of us so much who is so far away. While it is better to be safe than sorry, I feel like some improvements need to be made here to avoid being rear-ended by humans. Planner improvements also obviously need to be made. The beta seems to have a bit of a breakdown on this very clearly marked road. The planner shows it trying to turn left, but there's no left turn in the nav route at all, and it kind of drives off the, the lane markings a little bit and a bit awkwardly through here. It does it in other areas as well. Here you can see it being really indecisive about which lane it wants to be in and actually moving back and forth between both of them, which results in a disengagement. The odd thing is that every time I've noticed this happening, the visualization shows everything perfectly correct with the lane markings and everything. It seems to only be the path planner having the issues, which gives me hope that it will be fixed in future versions. The beta is at kind of a weird point where it can nail a really difficult, unprotected left turn and feel like a professional driver, and then right after get confused by the simple stuff like choosing a lane to be in. Yikes. Another thing I've experienced in this version is a pretty major step back in stop sign performance. For some reason, a lot of the stop signs around me where it used to perform perfectly fine, it now struggles for one reason or another. There's times where it awkwardly stops way too early for the stop sign, then does a weird creep forward and then stops again at the stop line, and just overall doesn't feel very confident at all. Other times it seems to give up the right of way and be extremely hesitant to proceed which can cause some confusion for other drivers. I'll be honest if I was here at this four way stop with me I would be pretty frustrated. Um, also seems to randomly creep through four way stop signs looking for visibility when it's really not needed and just feels so slow. I don't know why this happened, and it probably has a lot to do with it now being forced to come to a complete stop, but I do think it's very behind where it used to be compared to earlier versions. And the last couple clips we're going to talk about are what I would consider edge cases, and part of the reason we need a lot of beta testers on the road, and that's in order to find these edge cases in the first place. We're approaching a light that we're planning to go straight through. Well, I mean, kind of straight, but it's really not that straight. We kind of have to do this weird right and then left maneuver through it. The beta seems to treat this as two distinct maneuvers. First, making a right on red when it's safe to do so, and then making an unprotected left on the street. And honestly, I can kind of see why it would think that. It definitely is the wrong thing to do in this situation though, and I did submit a few snapshots so that the autopilot engineers can take a look at this and train on this data so that it performs better in the future. Using the beta kind of makes me realize how difficult driving actually is and the little nuances that most of us take for granted. Another example of this kind of edge case thing is knowing which stop signs to actually stop at. Sounds pretty basic, right? The stop signs facing you should probably stop pretty easy. But then what about this? We have a stop sign directly facing us, and I can kind of understand why the beta is stopping here and is a bit confused, even though I would have known to go right through it. The only way to make a self-driving car that drives on the roads that are designed by humans is to collect edge case data like this so that the car can perform better the next time it encounters it.
So keep submitting those snapshots, guys. The reason the FUD is so intense right now is because Tesla's getting pretty dang close. See you guys in the next one. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks again for watching. Bye.